Okay, so we're gonna keep talking about stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination today. <coughs> and our agenda is gonna be uh, racism, sexism, ageism, and we're gonna talk about uh, where does it come from briefly today. So racism, uh, this is a form of prejudice and discrimination that uh, assumes that the members of a of racial categories have distinctive cat cat characteristics and that these differences result in some racial groups being inferior to others. And that's the definition from uh, the, the Association of Sa Psychological, wait, American Psychological Association. Uh, and I embedded the link here if you want to check it out. So racism generally include um, negative emotional reactions or negative stereotypes. So now uh, I'm going to present you some videos uh, and you're going to tell me whether the following behaviors are racist in your opinion. And the warning is that um, the video contains some controversial and uh, maybe graphic or uh, foul languages. Um, so if you don't want to watch it, just don't watch it. Uh, and we have several clips, so if you feel like anyone that makes you uncomfortable, just stop watching it, okay? Is that racist? Okay. Uh, what makes you think that she's uh, being racist? She okay. automatically assumed he was illegal just because he didn't speak English. Yeah. Right. And um, she talked about someone's might snap her uh, neck or something. And what else? Uh, he assumed that this person was wearing other people's outfit. Right. That's a lot of negative assumptions. So. We can pretty easily tell this is racist, right? Okay. What about this one? Do you think that the blue shirt was being racist? You think so? You think so? Why? He was using like inappropriate terms, I guess, and like going by like stereotypical Asian names and stuff like that and making fun of him. Okay. He's like mocking him. Okay. Yeah. You, you 
agree. assumption and make the incorrect assumption about his ethnic background. Okay, uh, let's go back and take a look at the definition of racism. So this is a form of prejudice and discrimination, right? Uh, that assumes they have distinctive uh, characteristics. Um, and those differences result in some groups being inferior to others. And generally it includes um, negative emotional reactions and negative stereotypes. Do you think that in this video, uh, the blue shirt <coughs> had any prejudice uh, or discrimination behavior towards this guy? Or do you think it's more of a stereotypes? I think it was more stereotypes. Like I don't think he had like any like actual hate towards him. Mm -hmm. I just think he was being inappropriate. Yeah, and uh, do you think do you think that this guy has uh, any negative emotions towards this person? Or not, right? Not. I would kind of say yes. I mean, I think it's one thing to like have a stereotype in your head, but it's another thing to think it's okay to like disrespect someone to their face in front of everyone. Yeah. Um, how would you say that's disrespectful? Um, Cause like, it wasn't like they were like actually seeming serious about it. Like weren't they laughing and stuff? Yeah. Um, so he was laughing, right? Yeah. Do you know anyone who laugh when they kind of make a mistake and they feel embarrassed? Like an embarrassing laugh? Were they laughing when they first were talking to him though? Uh, let's take a look. Okay. Uh, What's your name? Freddy. Uh, right? Freddy. Okay. Weren't you at the U of A a few days ago? Yes, we were. What do you guys think now? Do you think it's a uh, racism or do you think it's more of a, an inappropriate behavior based on stereotypes? I think it's more of an inappropriate behavior based on stereotypes. Like I don't think they have like any like actual hate towards him mm -hmm. or like stuff like that. But I think they were being like inappropriate in regards to his race. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, and one thing uh, very important in the definition is you think this group is inferior to other groups, right? Do you think that's what's going on here? It's kind of hard to tell from the video, but it is mockery, and so mockery is usually meant to bring someone down. Yes, so how, how would you, how can you tell that's mockery? No, there's no like correct answer. I'm just trying to get you yeah. to think um, and tell me. I think the way that they're like calling after him rather than speaking to him. Yeah, it's 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 a bad example, but if it was a man cat calling a woman, we would consider that. Yeah, so let's imagine you go to as Americans, you go to a foreign country like Brazil or let's say Asian country. And then they see, oh, there's a white person or there's uh, American people. Um, they assume that you're from the U.S. or they hear you speaking English. And they're like, hello, but that's not their native language. Do you think that's racist? You don't think so? No? So what's different here? I think there's a difference between someone like greeting you face to face, like trying to communicate with you, or are you just walking by and then like yelling at you, kind of like yeah. what okay. I'm saying, like kind of gives like cat calling. So, so the people who are in, in the example that I gave you in Brazil or China, they don't really know English. They just want to say hi. They want to, they wanna, uh, I don't know, they want to make some kind of interaction and they, they have the same behavior like what he did. Uh, do you think that's racism? I think it's more stereotyping. Okay. Yeah, it's more mm -hmm. stereotyping. Yeah, because uh, so right now, if you go to an Asian country um, and someone from France goes there too, and you kind of look alike uh, to Asian people, uh, and 
you have European features, and they just assume that you're from the U.S. and both of you speak English, and they say hello, like very loudly in the crowd. Do you think that's more inappropriate or racist? I don't think that like is inappropriate at all because I think they're just trying to communicate with you and they don't know any better in that sense. Okay. Like I automatically assume that everyone I meet here speaks English, but I wouldn't say that's like an inappropriate behavior. That's just me. Like I automatically assume like when I meet someone who speaks English, so I usually greet people like hello. Mhm. Mm I think it depends on intent. Like if you're trying okay. to tell from the clip how this particular person, obviously the video was shot from mm -hmm. more of the perspective of the person who was. Um, yelled at over mm -hmm. or in the crowd versus yeah. him and we only see a few short moments of him yeah. so it's kind of hard to tell what his intent what his true feelings okay. are about yep. it yeah, very so good. it's kind of hard to tell whether or not it's effective okay so in this situation it's kind of hard for us to know what exactly he's thinking right uh, is he really a good actor that he's playing innocent or he's really innocent that he just make this assumption towards other people, right? It's hard to tell based on this clip. Okay, uh, next. Uh, this one's the George Floyd video, so it's more graphic. Uh, just a warning. You kind of know what's happened like afterwards, right? Okay, so I don't know, so I need to show you the long clips or describe the details. Um, do you think those uh, police officers were racist, or they are racist? Based on based on the the, the evidence that we have right now. Yeah. I think this is more a case of police brutality because. Like, I actually talked to a police officer, um, um, and he was like, oh, the hold that they did from the guy, he died not from the fact that he couldn't breathe, but they cut off oxygen in his brain, and that's why he died. And he was like, you're taught that hold, and you're taught never to do that. So 
that was a case of them knowing that they weren't supposed to do that, and they still went ahead and did that. Okay. So I think that was, this is more of a case of police brutality and inherent racism. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, a lot of people think this is racism, right? And that's what sparks the recent um, protest and violence um, and uh, the like spreading of Black Lives Matter movement, right? So you think it's more of a police brutality? I think more of it was, yeah, police brutality. Like, okay. I think, like, I can't know the police officer's intentions, and there's a good chance that they did that whole because they were racist and they were, like, knowing intentionally that they could kill him and they still went ahead and did that. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to tell whether or not they did that because they were, like, not caring whether the person died and not caring whether the person died because he was black. Okay. Right. What do you guys think? I agree. I mean, I think they're obviously bad police officers. Like, that's not their job to do that. But I think, like, I didn't hear them say something racist, okay. but it was also a lot of noise, so I might have missed it. Okay. Um, I think I would assume that mm -hmm. there's racial prejudice there, mm -hmm. but you'd have to compare, like, cases of how do they treat white people that they're trying to put into custody, mm -hmm. and then are they just bad all around, or are they, like, putting more force? Yeah, so you're saying we should compare yeah. how they treat other people. Okay, and then it gives us more information. Uh -huh. And then either way, would it be okay? But one would mm -hmm. tell you yeah. there's more reason than Okay. I definitely agree on that point, but there's definitely bad police officers because for, to get to that point, they have already decided that they need to charge him with something. Mm -hmm. And for it to get so far like that, um, they definitely didn't do their investigative thing that they should have, where they would have realized it was a real thing. Okay. Yeah, because uh, what happened at the beginning is they said that he was using like fake money, right? right. Okay. Um, okay, very good, very good. So, yeah, this is kind of hard to tell if you want to say whether they're racist or not. Uh, we don't have a comparison. Uh, we don't know how would they treat a white person with uh, psychological problem like George Floyd or under the influence of drugs. Yes? You could even say like, just based off the video, it would seem more like police brutality. Mm -hmm. But on the actions, I would say like racism, like even with like the $20 bill and stuff, like I haven't seen many like white people have been like arrested for having a fake $20 bill. Mm -hmm. Like if I had one, like I probably they probably just be like, "Don't use that fake money," and ask me questions. Okay. Um, um, so I guess like you'd have to compare different interactions of people like trying to use fake money. Okay. So I, races. I'm not very familiar with uh, uh, people using fake money. Let's say you use fake money at a store and then you got caught and mm -hmm. they call the police. Will you get arrested or not, or will you just say, they "Go away"? Don't call the police and on a first offense probably not and okay. it's just as simple like it was a real $20 though they did find that out and mm -hmm. it's just as simple as using the marker to like and mm -hmm. show a yellow mark and then you know the real bill. Okay like, so so you think it's more of the store uh, people? I think it escalated much further than it ever should have mm -hmm. in the first place. Okay. And that the police officers should have done their investigating before it got so bad. Okay, so you think they they kind of assumed yeah, he was guilty. Okay, yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's it's possible. So again, it's kind of hard to tell, right? Just based on uh, what we see here. Um, the reason that I'm showing you all this kind of clips is to show you sometimes it can be more complicated than. A lot of people think it is, right? Uh, when media tells you something, it's not a good idea to jump into conclusion very fast. Uh, it's the same with a lot of other issues that we talked about, right? Um, people's behavior are complicated and are complex, and we need to um, do more investigation, uh, like what you said, uh, not just for uh, using fake money or something like that. But also when you accuse someone of some kind of behavior, you should probably do more investigation before you make a conclusion, right? So yeah, um, any 
Any thoughts or questions before we go to the next part? Right, we good? Okay, so institutional racism. Uh, this is the differential uh, treatment of individuals based on their racial group by large social societies, such as religious organizations, governments, businesses, the media, educational institutions, and other. So it's not like any individual is behaving or having the, the attitudes. It's more about large social entities. So can you think of any uh, examples for institutional racism? They make it easy for some group of people, but not others. Okay. Any other examples? I would say that kind of thing applies to a lot of things, mm -hmm. like how close is your closest school, how close is your closest hospital, how close is the closest place you can vote. Mm -hmm. Like those things are probably going to be centered around your suburban white communities and may not be as accessible to um, like your other communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so in College Station and Bryant area, uh, I don't know if you guys know the the demographic difference. It's uh, in College Station, it's majority white, and then Bryant is majority black. Um, and then, you know, Bryant it's a little a little bit less developed, I guess. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Bryant's a little bit older too, and they just haven't quite caught up mm -hmm. either. And part of that is. Could be as well, but they're not getting the funding to mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any other examples? Could it be hiring, like promotions, right? Those could be happening, right? Uh, what about unfair media coverage? Yeah. Can you think of any example of unfair media coverage? A lot of times when they're covering like white criminals, they don't like highlight the fact that they're criminals. They highlight like, oh, he's a student, or oh, they have like a lot of things good coming for them. Like, mm -hmm. and but that's not the case for usually like black criminals. Like, mm -hmm. there's kind of a double standard. There. Yeah, there was a news. Uh, it was a uh, about hurricane. Uh, I think it's in Texas or Louisiana. And I don't remember if I show you the picture. So it's the same behavior. They they go to the store, like the the residents. They went to the store and got something out of the store. Um, and one newspaper showing a picture of white people getting the stuff from the store, and they said that they were uh, re they were getting stuff. And then the other one is black uh, people. And then the newspaper said they're looting stuff. So it's like terms that they use. For some reason, I thought I, I'm sure you that, but the terms they use is it can be misleading and can be unfair, right? Okay, and you remember um, the the affirmative action that we talked about? Okay, um, and last time you asked whether Harvard actually said that uh, that Asian people are boring. So I went to uh, do some research. And I embedded a link here if you want to go ahead and take a look. So this is from the New York Times. They said that um, Harvard rated Asian American applicants lower on personality traits. So that's uh, the, the behavior that they have. And uh, this is from the a Reddit. It's uh, basically they're summarizing what they did. Uh, they said that Harvard says they're not racist. Asians just have boring personalities. Um, so that's what happened. Okay, and do you think that uh, 
the affirmative action in academic is racism or institutional racism. I think if you put it that way, then it is. But like, uh -huh. it's not necessarily assuming that certain groups are inferior. If you're just trying to like make it more of an equal playing field. Uh huh. Okay. I think like it's a good thing, especially if like you see at some colleges, like you look at the application pool and all of the same people of the same race only getting accepted, mm -hmm. and you're like, that's a problem because that's not America. Mm hmm. So there are deeper problems to that, right? Yeah. So the people who are applying, who meet the standards, maybe they have better opportunities, yeah. right? What if they don't have the same opportunities, but they just uh, work harder? So we know different culture values different things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, collective culture values family more than individualist culture. And we're not saying that individualist, they don't value family it just in comparison yeah. one is more than the other uh, what if Asian culture they value education more than other race other ethnicity one example that I can give you is that so you know here a lot of students they they work part-time right when you go into college uh, you get less support from your current family and you kind of need to take student loans uh, in China Mm, for mass maturity, I, I want to say like 95% of time, uh, students, they are supported throughout college. They don't need to work, they just go to school. Um, unless it's like very extreme cases, the family cannot support them, and then they will have to go to work. Uh, and a lot of cases that they will uh, sell their houses so that their kids can go to education and have a better life later. So that's a difference in values, right? Sometimes you value this more than the other. What if that's the reason why Asian students are doing better? It's not like they, they have more money, they have more opportunities. They just put more time and money to this thing leads to this result. So knowing that culture differences, do you think this action could be racist, or do you think it's not? Yeah, There's no right and right answer. Affirmative mm -hmm. action is being like against Asian people, but more just like trying to make room for other groups, and yeah. that means you can take less Asian people. So that means it has to be like the top. Percentage uh -huh. is going to be higher than other groups. Yeah, so so let's talk about that. Uh, when you treat, um, okay, so so I'm going to give you the definition of affirmative action. All right, so this is the practice or policy of favoring individuals belonging to groups known to have been discriminated against previously. So yeah, um, so they are treating. Um, people differently based on their race, right? Do you think that's racist? Even though it's, uh, maybe it's, uh, there are, it looks like they are helping some group of people, but the action itself, do you think that's racist? No, because you're not assuming that people are inferior, hopefully. <laughs> um, inferior in terms of what, like? If they don't think that other people are inferior, why would they do that? Like if the goal of affirmative action is to like give more people opportunities, it's not saying that like anyone's inferior, it's just mm -hmm. saying we like value enough to try to yeah, really yeah. help you. But the criteria for affirmative action, do you get it? Like the criteria is they're selecting people who are inferior because they are discriminated mm -hmm. against previously. In, in history. Do you think that action is... What is it? Hold on. Cold Maroon, police searching for a suspect in sexual assaults near Nuclear Science Road and Rangeland Science. It's not here, right? 
Okay. Nuclear Science Road and Ranch Land Science. Okay. Uh, suspect described as college age black male wearing black shirt, possibly driving a red and black Mitsubishi. I don't know how to pronounce that, that brand. But uh, be careful and if you see something. Uh, I was saying, uh, maybe the goal, the goal is, uh, it's, it's good, but the criteria that they're using, do you think that's racist? The wording of the criteria is like, historically... Um, favoring individuals belonging to groups known to have been discriminated against previously. I don't think it's racism, I think it's like, justified discrimination. Just because you're like taking race into account. Okay. Okay. What do you guys think? I think technically, in one sense, it is inherently racist because then you're literally labeling one group as, oh, they need more help, so we're helping them out. So you're labeling them as inferior, mm -hmm. but it technically is racist. Okay. We look at it from like a definition standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, I think like inferior is more like a personal attribute. And so if you're saying like, like I wouldn't say that saying someone's inferior and saying that they like historically have had the same opportunities is the same thing. Hmm. So it depends on how you define inferior, right? Yeah. Would you say people have lower socioeconomic status are inferior to people who are wealthier? No, because I think of inferior as being like okay. you as a person, not your situation. Okay. I think inferior can refer also like if you're labeling someone as academically inferior because you're like lowering the standards for them, then you're like saying, oh, they're academically inferior, so mm -hmm. we're lowering the standards. Yeah. So it depends on how you use the term, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you, do you agree? I feel like people can use it to be racist, but it's not the intention of mm -hmm. like thing, but it can be used to do so. Okay, yeah, so it depends on how every single person define inferior. Um, and how they use it, uh, using their intention. Okay, very good. Again, there's no correct answer. If you don't agree, that's why we're just having a discussion. So as we talked about last time and we didn't have time to finish it, so why do many people think it's okay to discriminate Asians in affirmative action? Okay. But why is it okay though? <laughs> I think in the case of Harvard, obviously uh -huh. that particular instance mm -hmm. where they chose based on personality traits is very, very wrong. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Ivy Leagues in general, they usually take like a set number of students every year. Yeah, they have a they actually have racial quota. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but just like a general number every year too. It's yeah. like as so mm -hmm. if you tend to add to another class, unfortunately, yeah, that means it's taking away from a different group. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know why either. That's why we're discussing. Um, yeah, because uh, ju let's just talk about the Harper case. We're not talking about other schools because we don't really know what's going on. but. Harvard's case, um, the judge ruled that Harvard won, uh, so they, they are allowed to do it, um, to basically just discriminate based on uh, racial groups. Do you think that's a good idea, or do you think there are better practice than this? I think holistic review is better. Like, uh, can you explain? Where they take into account like all factors like what are your grades what are your things outside of school and then they also consider race but it's not like we need this many people of this race mm -hmm. unfortunately okay. when it comes to those ivy leagues and they're only taking the top 500 but out of the entire country and including international sometimes to um the difference between number 500 and number 501 is extremely extremely like down to 
the fifth or sixth decimal point from each PA. Mm -hmm. um, they're almost identical at that point. And it's unfortunate, but there's 501 deserves it just as much as 500 did. Yeah. So that's uh, how it works when you look at a continuous variable, right? Mm -hmm. You try to categorize them. Uh, okay, one, one last quick question. Um, do you think it would be a better practice to take away the race survey in application? Because to, to actually counter this movement, um, some Asians, they proposed just not put uh, your race in the application. Um, do you think, yeah? In some ways, it might help. Like, even, I had a girl at my school, like, she got into one of the Ivy League schools, and she was recognized as, like, one of the only, like, Native American, like, students accepted at Ivy League. But then you, like, talked to her, because, like, I knew, and she was, like, 1 16th, and you're, like, oh, like, asking about heritage and such. Like, I know nothing about it. I just put it on the application. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, like, terrible. Like, someone who, like, has grown up and, like, mm -hmm. is proud of their culture, like, should be, like, marking that. But, like, I can't tell them that. Yeah. But, um, also, <laughs> I've also seen, that, that's a one side note of, like, mm -hmm. sometimes people use that just for their advantage, even though they don't, like, it's not even part of their identity sometimes. Mm -hmm. They don't grow up with the uh, yeah. culture, and they're not, uh, they, they don't dump. But specific case. Yeah, it's yeah. actually pretty common. I personally, I know a lot of people <laughs> who are, they, they look as white as they can and they have like one of 16 uh, heritage of maybe Asians or black, but they look just white and then their family is white. They, they behave like, white people I know it sounds racist, but, <laughs> but you know the idea, right? And they can get scholarship based on the heritage like um it's actually pretty common so do you think that's a flaw that we can improve yeah. but probably even, like, right asking questions about like your family culture and like if you don't even know the culture you're identifying with like that might be a problem yeah. I, mean, I think any scholarship that's like geared toward minorities it should ask questions about like your experience because like personally, my mom is um, Chinese, mm. but like I obviously don't look like it. I haven't like really experienced any of like, the struggles, like identify with it very much. Um, so I, like that would not be fair of me at all to apply for a minority scholarship. Mm. I think on top of race, they should ask about heritage. Okay. As a question. Okay. Um, and then another issue with that is they tend to do like closed-ended questions. So if you're not one of the multiple choice answers, they might mm -hmm. just pick other of them. Yeah. Um, which, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, and then also, I also know like even if we were to get rid of the race question altogether, there's also been several studies where people are still discriminatory against names. Oh like, yeah. Like the pool of like applicants and like. <laughs> the one name, I think it was like the people like every single time the most qualified applicant out of all of them was a girl named Ladasha and they would never pick <laughs> her based yeah. off of her name and they're yeah. like, why were you never picking this person? True, so getting rid of yeah. ethnicity question might not solve the problem. Yeah, uh, since we don't have much time, but it's a good discussion. Um, and actually, even with people who have like white names, they discriminate too. People prefer easier names than uh, unique names. Yeah. Okay, uh, any questions before we go into uh, sexism and ageism? We don't have much time, but uh, I thought we had a pretty fruitful discussion. We good? Okay, so sexism. This is uh, discriminatory and prejudicial beliefs and practices directed against one of the two sexes usually women, and that's uh, the definition for uh, American Psychological Association. So what are some behaviors that you see or hear in your life that are sexist? We don't have much time, I'll just take some quick examples, and we'll move on. STEM fields tend to be male-dominated. Okay, oh, so you say it tends to be male-dominated, and 
you think that's racist? Well, no, no, sexist. Um, if it comes down to the decision between a man and a woman, and they're not identical, if the woman has more, they may choose the man. Because if they're more qualified. Okay. So that behavior is yeah, sexist, sexist, but not sexist. the the the. Because they feel a man can do the job. Okay. Very good. We'll, we'll go into that discussion very quickly. So tell me whether the following phenomenon is excessive. So some engineer professors think that female students are not good at math, so they treat them differently from male students. Sexist, all right? Jack always pays for his girlfriend's meal and helps her in every way he can because he thinks that girls are beautiful, fragile flowers, and it is men's duty to protect them. They're acting. Uh, how do you say it? Shivery? Shivers. Shivers. Yeah, and uh, acting as gentlemen. Yeah. I think it's fine paying for your girlfriend's meal always, and I think it's fine thinking it's the man's duty to protect them because, like, I do like when a man is, like, protective because I recognize, like, women just. It sucks that we live in, like, a society where women are hurt more than men, but that's just the case. I think the problem here is the fact that he thinks that we're, like, a fragile flower. So you think the problem's here? Yeah. Okay. But, okay, so if they think it's man's duty to protect them and help them in any way they can, do you think maybe they think that they're fragile, but they just don't notice it? Like, I think there's a difference between, like, protecting someone because you recognize that they need more protection and protecting someone because you think they're, like, incapable of helping themselves. Okay, okay. So, okay, so it depends on realizing the biological differences, right? I know some, some people might get offended <laughs> when we talk about biological differences. I know it happens in a lot of, um, a lot of schools. But uh, if you get offended, please let me know and then we'll not talk about it. Well, hopefully it's that we talk about it and we know the problem, right? Okay, thank you. Francis said, when I worked at Home Depot, I was explaining a problem to a customer male with their return and they asked for a manager. I brought over the female manager and she explained the same thing I did and the customer said, we are both incompetent and he wanted to speak of man. <laughs> sure. Sexism. I agree. Yes, that's definitely sexism. Uh, all right. So this is actually uh, benevolent sexism. Uh, this is different from hostile sexism. Also sexism is uh, what we just described. So here is a more specific one. This is a subjectively positive orientation of protection, idealization, and affection directed towards women that serve to just justify women's subordinate sa status to men. Okay. Maybe they realize it, maybe they don't, uh, but that's benevolent sexism. All right. So is this sexist or not? Only 30% of engineers are women and 87% of engineers are men. You think that's sexist? I think the statistic alone is sexist. Okay, so you think the stats alone is not? Yeah, okay. the stat alone isn't sexist, but uh, the mechanisms behind the statistic, okay. the way that we got there in the first place, uh -huh. yeah, probably sexism at work. Very good, very good. Uh, let's say you haven't taken the class. You never had this kind of idea. Do you see any other people using stats to say that's sexist? Or were you, did you have this kind of idea too? Okay, I no? I think that sometimes like, especially like media, they can pull out stats and mm -hmm. say sexism or like pull out different things and be like, just label them, uh -huh. like labels and it's easier. Yeah. Without people knowing what like a simple definition is, mm -hmm. you just label it and that's why it gets tossed around a lot more. Okay, yeah, yeah, so we see that very often. What about this? Only 9% of nurses are men and 91% of nurses are women. I think again, the stat itself isn't sexist because uh -huh. it just means less men are becoming nurses. Mm -hmm. um, but then you also have to look at like the other factors like are more men nurses but they're not getting hired as nurses mm -hmm. or why are less men becoming nurses that want to be nurses but they have trouble getting into the field. Very good, very good. That's exactly why we talk about, talk about this. Uh, is that based on the stats, you can't really say too much. Again, we're jumping to conclusion if we just look at the stats and say that's sexism or that's racism, that's ageism. Um, we have to look in deeper costs. Like, is it because they get discriminated 
during education, or is it they get discriminated during the hiring process, or is it just that women uh, are naturally uh, prefer or not naturally maybe growing up based on the gender expectations and then they they have their personal experience. So I'll give you one example. When I teach intro psych, uh, out of 220 students, I would say I'll have 97% women students. There are like only a couple men students. Um, it's possible that women, they're just more interested in psychology than men. And men are more interested in, let's say, engineers. Uh, they want to play with things instead of learning people's mind. Is, is that possible? It's possible, right? So that could be evolutionary. It could be genetics. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> it could be um, learned behaviors. Growing up, you're taught to, to do that. A lot of hobbies. Like, I like playing basketball. You like doing something else. It's based on your personal experience. Or maybe your genetics. Or maybe um, what you learned, right? So it really depends on deeper reasons than just looking at the stats. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Historic effects as well. Yeah. Um, for the longest time, there's, there's certain positions that, uh, while we don't think that there were certain positions that were like strictly female, only certain mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe certain decisions that were like typically yes. female. Nurses was one of them, especially military-wise. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's definitely a factor that can still be playing out over history, even um, if it's unintentional. Yeah, very good, very good. So it could be based on a lot of different factors. Mm -hmm. We can't just look at the stats and say, oh, that's something. So the glass ceiling, this is a metaphor referring to an artificial barrier, barrier, sorry, uh, that uh, prevents women from being promoted to managerial or uh, executive level positions. So this actually exists, so it's like, um, institutionalized, uh, institutional uh, sexism, uh, it does exist. And any questions about the glass ceiling? It's pretty simple, right? And you hear about this a lot. Um, lastly, we have ageism. I think we still have some time. Yeah, we have three minutes. So ageism, <laughs> I don't know if you know the mean guy, Harold. Um, he's really funny. And he's a nice person too. They had they done an interview on him. And so that means. Anyway, so this is the tendency to be uh, prejudiced against older adults to negatively stereotype them uh, as unhealthy, helpless, or incompetent, and to discriminate against. Okay. So, what are some behaviors that you see or hear in life that are no not sexist, ageist? Yeah. Um. I know this, at least for like hiring uh -huh. and stuff, like especially, I know, I just had a friend who got hired as like a flight attendant, uh -huh. and they only want like people who are like young, they don't want to hire like older flight attendants, or like people who are older, mm -hmm. um, and that, and so they're like, they won't tell you that directly, yeah. but they're being a little ageist in that. Yeah, so very good example, in employment, it's very common that they want younger people, uh, compared to older people. And healthcare, right? Uh, they might discriminate against uh, older people. All right, so, uh-huh. Actors can also be one, like actors in the media. Yeah. Even newscasters in general media. Yeah. Uh, they tend to want younger, fresh mm -hmm. faces, mm -hmm. stuff that's good for the brand. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so they, they can be very interesting. Yeah, entertainment. Pretty good. We have one minute. So I'm gonna go through this last slide. Where did they come from? Uh, socialization. So maybe it's coming from direct observation of others, uh, like media, institutions, right? Uh, it could be schema. Uh, so schema theory suggests that we have tendency to uh, categorize. So we categorize people into groups, and then we have stereotypes, we have prejudice based on those groups, right? And then we have the realistic conflict theory. This suggests that limited resources lead to conflict between groups and result in prejudice and discrimination. It's pretty easy to understand, right? Um, you want, uh, when you have 
some kind of resource that you want. And the easiest way is to categorize people and then discriminate based on groups. And then lastly, we have the in-group favoritism. This is the tendency to respond more positively to people from our in-groups than we do to people from our groups. We talked about this before, right? So those are some of the theories or reasons why uh, we have stereotypes, uh, prejudices, and discriminations. That's it. Do you have any questions? You good? All right, right on time. <laughs>